What well, going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Reefer, coming out with today's video, which is visiting the subscribers pond and also pricing up some new upgrades that he wants on it. So, let's go. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack, I am indeed The Balding Reefer. I specialise in tropical, cold water, pond and marine fish. This video is all about visiting a subscriber's pond and also pricing up for some upgrades that he would like on his system. Uh, it's all hand-built, by the way. Um, he's doing it all himself. Uh, never had any experience of pond keeping before or anything like that. I've seen some pictures. It does look absolutely tremendous. Before we actually get into viewing uh, Mad Dog's Pond, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the drone up uh, to give you guys a bird's eye view first and then we're actually going to have a little bit of a chat and a little bit of walkthrough with Mad Dog about why he's built it this way, how he's built it this way and also the extra little upgrades he wants. So, let's go! Okay, so you've just seen the drone footage, looks absolutely incredible. Let me spin you around now and show you more of a deeper dive. So, Glyn's built all this himself, obviously his gardens on a bit of an embankment. So obviously everything sits perfectly plumb level. He's got his uh, solar lights here on the side of the pond, which obviously just illuminate his steps up the side. He's got his little bit of a uh, filter house on there at the moment. And then he's got his big barrel filter system on here. You walk up the steps, nice handrail on there. It's just a DIY barrel filter and his backy shower as well. 5.8 meters deep here and about uh, three foot deep over here. Uh, sorry, 5.8 foot deep here and about three foot deep at the end. He's got his little feeding cone here, some pond plants, and then he's got the All Pond Solutions skimmer, which you guys have seen on one of my videos. And he's got a little bit of a DIY bog filter on here. Now, what Green originally wanted to do, or should I say, what Green originally had me around to do was to actually price this pond up to take the liner out, concrete block the inside, put some bottom drains in, fiberglass it all. But realistically, Green's done all of this himself. We're going to have a bit of an interview with him in a moment and he can explain everything. But very briefly, he's done all this himself. He's been set up since March last year, 2020. He doesn't really need the bottom drain. All we're actually going to do is we're going to take the liner out. We're going to go from the deepest point here, which is 5.8 foot. And we're going to go all the way to the back edge of the pond. And we're going to keep the natural lip in that's there. We're then going to put a new liner in. Two retrofit bottom drains, hard piped in down the back and coming out underneath this corner piece here. So you won't actually be able to see any of the pipe work. <coughs> you're then in turn going to build him a filter house on here to actually fit in three DIY K1 moving bed filters that's so going to be gravity fed with a pump return going in to create a lot of natural flow going through the pond. Glenn's actually built all of the guttering himself, all the drainage, built all the roof himself as well. He's just put some holes in for air circulation going through at the moment. He's actually going to be putting some perspex over the top as well. He's got his water purifier there on the back for when he's doing all of his water changes. He's got some lights set up here over night time. He's also gone ahead and built all of his seating area as well. So all these are actually made at a Euro pallet, same as the table. All of his cushions are custom as well to all of his sizing that he actually built. He's got his little greenhouse and his custom king and queen chairs at the back. And then he's got his, uh, his fry set up at the moment as well, which is just literally growing some on, which is absolutely incredible. Started to separate out his Tobies just into a floating uh, pond basket with some polystyrene just attached onto the side, which is a super, super good idea. There are some more Tobies down, all he's doing is every day that he sees them on the top, he's just scooping them out, 
and just popping his Tobies into the top of the basket there. But I, for one, am super, super envious. He's done all this himself. He's not a carpenter. He does work for Land Rover. He is a prolific problem solver. So literally, he's done all this himself. But let's sit down and have a chat with the man himself, eh? So here's Mad Dog himself. You guys have already seen him on a lot of the uh, different videos we've been doing on the uh, Reefer Oasis build and stuff like that. But I just thought it was a perfect time to sit down with Mad Dog, go through all of his pond setup and stuff like that. So obviously I'll give him a brief overview at the minute, but do you want to explain sort of where this all began, how long it's been up and running? Yeah. And your mad skills? To be fair, it started with a challenge for my daughter and my son. Um, they like to lure me into a full sense of security, probably the best way to describe it. So if they want some, me to do something, they'll say, you'll never do it, Dad, you'll never do it. You know, the trouble is, you just don't want to know. So of course, when I'm going to do something, I don't do things by halves. If I'm going to do it, so I'm going to do it right. So originally, we thought, we'll have an 8x4. 8x4, out of sleep, it was nice and simple, it'll be done. And then Trace went, nah, it's not big enough. So then it became 16 foot, 16 foot 4, by eight foot four, by five foot eight deep. So, quite an interesting bit. It's made ninety percent of it is out of sleepers. So yeah. there's in the region of about one hundred and three sleepers. But to be fair, in the old days, when I say the old days, post COVID, sleepers were fourteen pound each. Yeah, there you go. So and what they're at now about twenty eight quid each. Yeah, but the last time I did it, I tried to if possible for Sam. They were thirty two pound each. We're talking just over 12 months, aren't we? Yeah. Just over 12 months. So it's gone up dramatically. All the rest of it is made out of 4x4 or 2.4 metre. And my, my favourite wood, which is 4x2, as you can see above. So I just yeah. love creating stuff. And again, all the seating, that's all out of what they call Euro pallets. So they're standard pallets, but they're, they're all specific size. You can find them because they've got the radiuses on the edges. And all this is made out of Euro pallets with a bit of covering on it. So you basically upcycle some pallets to make some absolutely epic, epic it's city not furniture. It's not oh, it's awesome! Is that honestly? And, and to be fair, these are so comfy. It's untrue. They've got the waterproof coating over the top of them as well, so it's literally enough. you don't. There's no real maintenance to it, is there? You can literally leave them out all year, all year round, yeah, and yeah. and that's it. I mean, me, I'm one of them that once it's out, I just want to sort of leave it there, and that's where I end up destroying my garden furniture. I'll be honest with you. In the winter, we're out here. Yeah. We, we turn with the bar section that's on the, in the table there, we turn that into a heat to a, a burner. Yeah. So we just sit out here. Coming out here, listening to the waterfalls and listening to the fish jumping out and stuff like that, you can't you can't buy that. Yeah. You can't buy it. So and that's why it's so important to create it. So what I've got if you like a haven inside a haven if that makes sense. Literally. What's it's, the best way beautiful. to describe it? It's absolutely beautiful. The um the fire pit that Glyn's actually talking about, let me just spin it round, is this bit here. So at the moment, this is uh, Glyn's hidden little beer fridge in the middle of the table with some of his own very special homebrew in there. And then he was explaining that this actually comes out and then a fire pit goes in. The way that it's built here is the flames can actually go through the middle without burning any of the wood or anything like that. Um, as if on cue it's just started to rain, should we head down to, to Glynn's bar and you can show them that? I think it might be a good idea, hadn't it? Let's go. So there was a, there, there was a this fence in here, there was a, a small uh, accident, which is why that's there. So Glynn just went to put some more fencing in. But all this here, Glynn's put together himself. Okay, so just before we actually head down uh, to the bottom end of the garden, uh, we've actually got another little bit of a surprise. So Sam is super duper envious uh, of the ponds that me and Mad Dog's got. So Sam's got the pond bug now. We're actually gonna be going up to the Isle of Arran to actually build him one. So Glyn did a little something for him, uh, which I'll spin around and I'll let Glyn explain it. Right, so basically, because you're Sam's so jealous of the ponds that we've seen over the last couple of days, <laughs> I said that I'd bake you one. So, here's your new pond. What you don't know is that's going to be the design for your pond that's going to be taking place at your place sometime this year. So, everything is to scale, so it's 1 50th scale. So these are actually sleepers, 8 before sleepers to scale. 
so you can see so in the event of us not being able to get down to you you can literally take each section apart and go that's how that fits so you can see based on this it's exactly the same as the design I've got on my pond so they're all interlocked into each other okay and then 3 by 3 slip 3 by 3 posts to give you your strength and then your roof think of that eh? awesome yes yeah, when, when he pulled it out disbelief because it is it's exactly what I want and to see it scaled down and I can look at it and pull it apart the way I want see how things work yeah it's incredible so thank you very much we can actually do one better than that so what we can do is we can also supply you with your very own liner oh. look at that so what you can do is get some fry from Jack on the way back and obviously then you can install your liner you can then put a trim round it you can put the water in it put your fish in there and then you can do it to scale so you can sit it outside don't forget obviously your small fry are going to be 1 50th of the scale of what you want so if you're looking realistically in there I'll give you exactly what you want mm. now I don't know what I'm doing we're a log plane and that yeah. makes sense yeah yeah so okay that's all yours to take back with you Thank you very much. There you go. That's your liner for your pond. Okay, and we'll come and see you. It's going to be towards the end of the year. Maybe. End of the year, yeah. Be towards the end of the year. And it's going to look pretty much like that. Awesome. Let's uh, let's head down to the bottom end of the garden, and we'll show you the rest. Moving round to uh, the garden furniture down here again. This is something that Glyn's built. Not a carpenter either, are you, my friend? I don't know carpentry. I just know how to put a bit, few bits and pieces together. And then to be fair, carpentry is really easy to be fair. And then this is uh, Glyn's bar. So again, he put this together himself. Uh, a kit ordered online. For those of you that are wondering, it's just there. Dunster House, and then we've got Mad Dog's bar, or Glyn's bar as it's called here. And then on the back, hanging up, we've got a. Uh, Mad Dog's bar sign on there. TV all hooked in, sound system, sauna, yeah. Bluetooth system in there, and then throughout, he's just like an absolute haven of uh, Glyn and his wife on the travels that they've been over the years and stuff, different parrots, pelicans, dolphins, Glyn kissing some dolphins there, Glyn's wife at the Hard Rock Cafe, uh, a big Emirates jet there, a crocodile farm that he went to visit. Uh, he was explaining about the the frogs that you see on this picture was Kenya. Kenya, yeah. Kenya, so that in Kenya, that's to put frogs inside the toilet uh, for sanitary reasons. Um, looking at some of these camel spiders that were taken in. Let's have a look at which one. So that was 2009. So that was in Kenya. Kenya was 2009. Jamaica was 2013. Um, Dubai was 2009 as well. So, yeah, we've been about a bit. I don't like staying local, if that makes sense. I want to try and enjoy the hospit hospitality of everybody. And that is where we stayed. So if you want a tent, that's a tent. And one of the biggest experiences, if you ever want to go to Dubai, is the hot air balloon over the Sahara Desert. And that is an absolutely fantastic, epic journey. That should be awesome. Glyn is a big, big fan of homebrew, so he's been so, making up his own. You can't beat, you can't beat a bit of bully. So, and, and trust me, it is genuinely, it is homebrew. The perfect head, and as clear as clear can be. And do you know what? Well, I'll let you taste it. You can tell him. Stunned. Impressed? Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't expect any anything less from Mad Dog. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. So, as, we, as I touched on when we were outside on the pond, sort of obviously we come down. Obviously, you, you, you've helped out the channel an awful lot. So we, we're going to do some serious upgrades to your pond. However, having gone through everything, obviously we've discussed amongst ourselves that it doesn't it doesn't warrant those sort of upgrades. No, okay. So we're going to be increasing filtration, different bits of drainage, yeah. uh, filter house on there as well digging it down, relinering, retrofit bottom drains and stuff like that, which in turn is going to save you, obviously, a small fortune. Some 
Um, we're not one to quote a job. We're not one to quote a job and just get it done for the sake of doing it. Um, that's not what we're about uh, on this channel or anything like that. Glenn had a budget in mind, which I'm not going to go through. Uh, but Glenn had a budget in mind we can probably do it for two thirds less than what he was originally planning which means he gets to take his wife to some more beautiful destinations around the world um we're probably going to be looking to start probably in the winter um so we don't actually destroy Glenn's garden in the summer um so it'll keep the wife happy and impressed um but yeah if you guys are in need of any pond jobs or anything like that obviously reach out uh, all over the west midlands staffordshire and cheshire um but yeah Big thanks to uh, Mad Dog for showing us around on his pond today. It's been absolutely awesome. I uh, can't wait to actually get started on this one. So this is one for the future. So if you want to see what we, we've got planned on Mad Dog's pond, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, which is at the Balding Reefer. Instagram is slightly different. That's at the dot balding dot reefer. But as ever, stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people stay happy. Balding Reefer, out. There we go.